the scientific and cultural net science and technology. University physics electricity and magnetism. The electric field. A field can be considered a region of interaction. As an example, a football field is a certain area where two teams play according to some rules. Similarly the electric field can be defined as the region where electric charges interact with each other. It exists in the space surrounding any charge. The concept of an electric field was proposed by Michael Faraday. The electric field is similar to the gravitational field that is produced by a mass such as the Earth. The gravitational field of the Earth depends only on the Earth. All masses placed at a certain distance near the Earth find themselves in the same gravitational field. Fields can be scalar or vector fields. A scalar field is specified by its magnitude only. When we walk from the outside to the inside during the winter, we will be walking through a scalar temperature field. On the other hand, vector fields can only be specified by their magnitude and direction such as gravitational field electric or magnetic fields. If a charge is placed near another charge, it will experience an electric force because of the field created by the first charge. If a small charge feels an electric force when it is placed in any empty space, we can conclude that an electric field must exist in that place. The electric field depends only on the charge creating it. It is independent of any other charge that may come into the field of Q. Mathematically the electric field, due to a charge Q is defined, as the force, that a unit charge small Q experiences, if placed in the field, at a certain distance from the charge. The field is simply the force per unit charge. F is the Coulomb force acting on the charge. The small Q represents a very small positive test charge used to find the magnitude and direction of the field produced by the big Q without affecting the field. In the SI system, the force is measured in newtons and the charge in coulombs. The field, which is the force per unit charge is measured in newtons per coulomb. The direction of the field is always determined by using a positive test charge. The electric field due to a point charge Q at a distance or from it, is given by E equals F over Q which is equal to KQ over R squared. It only depends on Q and the distance or from it. Electric field direction the field due to a positive charge is directed away from it, because positive test charges will move away if they are free. If the charge producing the field is negative, then the field lines will be directed toward the negative charge. Field lines or lines of force A visual representation of the electric field can be obtained by drawing field lines surrounding the charges. Subject to the following rules. Electric field lines start at positive charges and end at negative charges. For point charges they point radially outward or inward. The number of field lines is drawn proportional to the magnitude of the source charge. Field lines do not cross each other. On conductors, field lines start and end perpendicular to the surfaces. The direction of the field at any point due to a number of charges is simply the direction of the resultant electric field vector at that point, using the superposition principle. Electric field lines may bend in space, as they follow the direction of the resultant force. Changes in electric field travel at the speed of light. Field lines do not exist in regions, where there is no net force. No field lines start from nothing or disappear into nothing. If some lines start from a closed surface or region, then that region must contain a net positive charge. And if the lines end up within a closed surface or region, then that region must contain a net negative charge. Once the field lines are drawn, then the direction of the field at any point is determined by the direction of the tangent to the line at that point. The total number of lines drawn out of the source charge depends only on the magnitude of the charge. The field strength is proportional to the number of lines per unit perpendicular area. The denser the lines, the greater the field. As an example, four field lines pass through a certain area placed at A, 
but only two field lines pass through the same area, if it is placed at B. This indicates that the field strength at A is stronger than the field at B. A uniform electric field has the same value and direction in a certain region. It is represented by parallel field lines. A non-uniform electric field is represented by curved lines. The field shown decreases to the right. In the past, scientists believed that the electric force was transmitted almost instantaneously by the field. In this classical theory of electromagnetism, the force between charged particles arises from the electric field produced by each charge at the position of the other. The field extends to infinity and the force on any charge can be calculated using Coulomb's law. The Coulomb force is a long-range force, just like the gravitational force that exists between masses. These two forces are examples of what is classically called action at a distance which follows an inverse square law. The electric field of a point charge also follows an inverse square law. It decreases as 1 over r squared, and becomes 0 only at infinity. The theory of fields. In the 1960s, a new theory of interaction between charges was developed. Basic concepts of the new theory. Forces exist as a result of the exchanges of carriers between interacting charged particles. The force carriers of the electromagnetic interactions are the photons. This new theory is called quantum electrodynamics. Quantum electrodynamics is a relativistic quantum field theory. It extends quantum theory to electric and magnetic fields. It deals with the interaction of charged particles and photons. Quantum electrodynamics successfully and accurately describes all interactions of charged particles with one another and with electromagnetic waves. The theory originated from work by P. Dirac, and was later developed independently by Richard Feynman, Julian Schwinger, and S. Tumaniga. Quantum electrodynamics is based on the idea that charged particles interact by emitting and absorbing photons called virtual photons that serve as the carriers of momentum. The virtual photons do not exist outside the interaction and only serve as carriers. Quantum electrodynamics theory eliminated the classical concept of action at a distance, because the interaction is due to direct contact with the virtual photons. Those photons also carry the information about the charge, whether it is positive or negative. Richard Feynman developed space-time diagrams to represent the interaction of charged particles. These diagrams are called Feynman diagrams. Due to the success of quantum electrodynamics, and the fact that both electric and gravitational forces are both long-range forces, there are attempts to explain gravity using quantum mechanics, by employing a theory called quantum gravity, that assumes the existence of a particle with zero rest mass, called the graviton which acts between masses, just like a photon that acts between charges. One of the difficulties with this theory is that according to the general theory of relativity, gravitation is described in terms of the geometry of space-time. If gravity is quantized then space-time itself might be quantized, which will open up many challenges in both physics and philosophy.